Welcome to my channel. My name is Fernando Hernandez. On my channel, I talk about health, fitness, personal development, and finances. If any of those things interest you, please subscribe and follow along. Before we get into exactly how to budget, I want to go over the why. Why budgeting is absolutely critical for your financial health and why so many people just don't do it. According to Empower Research, 37% of Americans cannot afford an emergency expense over $400. Can you imagine that? That's almost half of Americans. That's crazy. For the people that do have an emergency savings, one in four, so 25% of them, had to dip into their emergency savings to cover basic living expenses within the past year. It's no longer emergency savings if you have to take money out of your emergency savings to cover your basic living expenses. 62% of Americans want to have a dedicated emergency savings, but nearly half of the people say that their expenses are too high and they cannot put money away for emergencies. And that is exactly when budgeting comes into play. Trust me, I know about domestic hardships. I know when bills are too high and I know when you have to live paycheck to paycheck, the last thing that is on your mind is putting money away for a rainy day that may or may not ever come. But I promise you, with that mindset, when that rainy day comes, you will be poured on with no umbrella and you will be drowning for someone to help you and there may not be anyone there to help you. So it's my job to help educate you, to get you out of your financial rut and learn how to budget so you never have to end up in that situation in the future. Budgeting also helps you get control of your finances. A lot of times, and I'm guilty of it, the only things that are on our mind is going to work, getting your paycheck, paying your bills, having food in the pantry. And that is a million percent super important. It's basic survival. But what that does is it releases the control from us and gives the control to our boss, the government, the grocery store, the utilities, the rent. And so budgeting helps you take back control over that. You should be able to, with the correct budget, pay for your expenses, see where there's extra money because there always is, and how you can leverage that money to also have an emergency fund. It is impossible for me to understand how you can have people that depend on you and not have anything put away for emergencies. So if you do not have an emergency fund, or if you are living paycheck to paycheck, but you're still door dashing and Uber Eats and food and going to Dave and Busters or getting drinks out with your friends, like stop literally stop today's the day for your reality check that segues perfectly into what i need you to do and that is to take stock of exactly what are your needs and what are your wants to me needs fall under five critical categories and that is it anything outside of those five categories are a want no matter how much you think you need it, if it's not under these five categories, it is a want and it can hold off. Number one is housing. Reasonable housing. I'm not talking about a penthouse with a New York City view. I'm talking about reasonable housing. Unfortunately, we live in a time where the rents are through the roofs. If you own a home recently, the rates are through the roof, so your mortgage is through the roof. And that is undeniable and we have to work around that. So this is why it's important to understand that the needs are needs income has to work around our needs and that is how the budget is going to help number two is utilities mention how i didn't say bills some people can have the newest iphone with a crazy phone bill and they're like oh that's a bill that's a need uh, you don't need the newest iphone so utilities your gas your electric your water your sewage whatever you are required to pay to live in the home you are in so i'm at three we have two more. My people, I love you, but take a break from eating out. Cook. Before you say, I don't have time to cook or I have all of these things I need to do. The amount of time you spend to figure out where you want to eat at on DoorDash app or Uber Eats app, place your order, wait for it to be delivered. You could have made a quick meal, rice and chicken, 
and beans. Super Spanish. So don't give me the spiel. Trust me, everything I'm telling you, I was a victim of. Sometimes I still am a victim of. Number four is clothing. Listen, if you have debt and you're buying Gucci flip-flops, come on, you're, you're digging a hole deeper for yourself. The clothing, like necessary clothing to go out, look reasonable, clothes for work, all of that stuff is super, super, super necessary. And it's also super affordable if you're buying things right. Look, I get, I get things name brand from Marshalls on clearance. And I'm not ashamed. I'm still rocking the same polo shirt somebody spent $55 for. Then I got it at Marshall on the rack for $35. It's the same thing. So clothing is important. Buying it smart is equally as important. And then the last thing, healthcare. So that's healthcare, child care, premiums on your insurance, daycare for the kids, primary physician for you and your children, either like mental health care, like all of those things are definitely necessary. And also shop around for rates. Like there are so many people that just pay the premium that they were given by some company because it was referred by somebody or because they saw it was popular. Shop around for rates. So those are your needs. Again, one more time, housing, utilities, food, clothing, and healthcare. That's it. Anything outside of that realm is a want. Hulu, Netflix, HBO, Amazon Prime, those are all wants. Even though you might feel like you need it, they are wants. And if you need to take a break from those things to cover your needs and to cover saving for an emergency fund and to cover debt pay down, then you have to do what you have to do. You just you just got to do it. And it's temporary. You don't have to do it forever. But once you get to a more comfortable state which you will if you're consistent and you actually stick to the plan you will get to a point where you can afford those subscriptions again it's never forever it's temporary now that we went over the differences between wants and needs we can finally get into exactly how to budget i'm gonna preface this it's not fun it's annoying it requires daily work. It depends on how you want to do it. If you want to budget on a weekly basis, it requires a little bit more time. If you want to budget on a daily basis, it requires less time, but more frequency. And if you want to budget on a monthly basis, it requires more time, way less frequency. You also leave a larger gap for error. By the time it's the end of the month, you probably were already over your personal shopping budget by like 200 bucks. And if you weren't really able to catch that, rather if you were doing it weekly, weekly or daily, you'd be able to kind of see, hey, you know, I got to lay off the Sheen orders. (laughs) I got to lay off the trips to TJ Maxx for a little bit. If not, I'm going to be over my budget at the end of the month. So let's get into exactly what budgeting should look like. We are going to pretend my name is Joe (laughs) and I make $1,400 every two weeks on my paycheck. So that's $2,000. $800 a month. I want to say for someone that lives on their own or maybe has one child, that's okay. It's a little low and I would probably think of ways to increase my income. But for this example, let's just say we have no other side income besides the one job I have paying me $2,800 a month. So in this section here, we have the category section and this is where I am categorizing my needs. The first thing I like to do on my budget is kind of slice things up by priority. Your first priority as soon as your paycheck hit is paying for your needs. In this example, this person literally is just saving a hundred dollars a month. This can be a very realistic example for a lot of people. Just by sticking to your budget and you're doing the bare minimum, just paying for your needs, you only have a hundred dollars left over. Some people are in the negative every month. They're struggling to figure out how to pay for the deficit and how to make up some extra income, whether it's borrowing from a family member, whether it's doing something, selling some things, making some extra income to kind of just bridge the gap on their income versus their expenses. 
So in this very realistic scenario, the first thing I would try to do is increase my income. That's like the clearest and sometimes the easiest thing to do is like, okay, how can I increase my income? Can I take on a weekend job? Even if it's just serving tables on the weekend or picking up two or three extra shifts at your job, try to think of ways to just increase your income because as it is right now, your rent is $1,600. Your groceries for the month is $400. Your utilities, your healthcare, your personal shopping and gas for your vehicle is bringing your total expenses every month at $2,700. If you cannot increase your income, which I find hard to believe, but let's just say, if you cannot increase your income, then you are going to have to do the very difficult thing of minimizing your expenses there may be ways you can cut down on some of these costs. Rent, unfortunately, is super high. $1,600 a month, depending on your area, is actually pretty standard, unfortunately. I live in New Jersey, $1,600 a month gets you like a one bedroom in an okay area, and it, that is the reality. Probably not gonna be able to shave anything off of that. Your utilities, again, $300 a month for some people is high. This is an example. I wanna make this example as hard as possible because if you're in a position where it's not as this difficult, if I can find solutions here, then you can definitely find solutions for yourself. So let's keep utilities the same. Healthcare. A lot of jobs offer you healthcare. It's garnished from your paychecks. It's not really something that you have to think about paying outside of your job. I know generally therapy sessions tend to be $100 per session. So if you go to therapy twice a month, that's $200 a month. So we're not going to be able to shave anything off of that. Groceries. $400 a month in groceries is a little high. Again, this is an example of someone who lives on their own and maybe has one dependent. If you're a family of five, your grocery expense is gonna look a lot different in this example, and you are going to have to work around your income to pay for that need plain and simple. Even if you're a family of five, if you go with a cost conscious mindset shopping, I'm pretty sure the amount of money you spend every month on groceries can drastically go down. So for this example, we are going to live off $300 a month in groceries. Personal shopping is a mix of wants and needs. If you need a new suit for work, you need a new suit for work. Or scrubs, if you're a nurse or you work in healthcare, you have to budget expenses for paying for that. But do you really need to get a new outfit for work every month? I don't think so. So the personal shopping, I'm going to leave it at $125, but I think that should be able to fluctuate. Again, if you are cost conscious, like maybe one month you're going to spend $125, maybe another month you're only going to spend $100. Next thing is gas. This is vastly different for a lot of people. I personally don't even drive to work. I take the public transportation to work. So my gas per month is ridiculously low, but $75 is reasonable, especially with the way gas prices are now. I essentially am able to save $200 every single month if I stick to this budget down to the dollar. Where should that $200 go? The $200 should go into priority number two, and that is emergency savings. That is a million percent required. Before you even think about going to Starbucks with that $200 or buying that pumpkin spice latte, that money should go towards emergency savings. If you need to use it, then use it. We're not going to overcomplicate things, but we need to start making monthly strides towards saving an emergency fund. Say it with me. We need funds to cover expenses in case of an emergency. Be prepared so you don't have to scramble to get prepared. So that is priority number two. And that is all you have to do. That's it. End of story. Do not do anything else until you have at least $1,000 saved up in an emergency fund. If you are Joe and you already have $1,000 in your emergency savings, great. Now you can move on to high interest debt like credit cards or a car loan if you have one. This is under the assumption that you own a car. Car loans and having the newest 2020 whatever model is the biggest sham ever. So if you can avoid it, avoid it. As soon as we add something in here, 
like a car note. A reasonable car note is like 300 or 350 dollars. We're already in the negative by 100 bucks. We can't even save a dollar. If this is you, you 100% need to increase your income. We need to get to a point where we are making more money. We're also spending less money. We are saving more money. And then we can have an emergency fund as just in case money. And you can get out of the hamster wheel of just living paycheck to paycheck. That is going to be the end of the video. I hope Hope you guys learned a lot. I hope this was the reality check you needed. There are going to be a lot more finance videos coming soon. Please be sure to subscribe. If there was anything I said that hit a nerve or if there was anything that I said that you do not agree with or if you just genuinely have any constructive feedback, positive feedback or questions, please comment on the video and I promise to get back to you. Peace.